So I want to introduce you to one of our, uh, our good and proud and, and longtime members with the Stereo Barn, who will be talking to you a little bit today, uh, Mr. Charlie Bach. Everything you buy today is connecting to the internet. Televisions, stereos, DVD players, everything is connecting to the internet. This has been a massive change for a lot of guys like us, okay? Because in the past, when people would come in and they'd want music in a house. We want music in six. I want music on my patio when I sit out there in the morning and read the paper. I want it in the kitchen. I want it in the master bath when I take a shower. Whatever it is that you want. We can do that easily. We've been doing that for 25 plus years. What has changed is the source of music that people want to listen to. Because in the past, everyone asked to listen to CDs. Before that, it was even cassette tapes or radio. Right? How many people wanted to listen to radio? You want to listen to a specific station around here. How hard is it or easy is it to get FM stations? You got to put an antenna up. You put one in the attic. The source of music was always erratic. Today, the source of music that everybody says they want to hear is XM or Sirius, or the music that they can get off the internet from Pandora or Rhapsody, or the music that's on their computer or their iPad. So manufacturers of these products have figured out how to bring that into your house very easily. I do have hooked up and demonstrating a system uh, that is very cool. This is a table radio, uh, which was easy for me to bring. This type of system can be incorporated into your music system that you have, or if you have music throughout the house. With this device connected to your system, you literally have access to all the music in the entire world. And that sounds like a big claim, right? But all the music in the world is available through the internet. You name it, it's there, okay? So for example, this morning when I came in, and Christian and Tim were here, we set up, and, I, and again, I apologize for the small interface. Um, I plugged this in, this is, uh, I plugged in a device to their internet in the back, to their router, which is sending a proprietary wireless signal to this box right here. So there's no connection between us and the office. That's the connection to the internet, it controls it here. This particular device, the reason I brought this along is this device is talking straight to that one without using Wi-Fi. If we had Wi-Fi in here, you'd be using your phone or your iPad, or that's what I would be using. I could put five of these in my house, and what shows up on my screen is the room that I've labeled it. In this case, we named this the living room. And when I select living room, and I go to music, there's a menu there. I know it's kind of hard to see, okay? But that menu is my choice of where I can get music from. And on that menu is everything this system will see. If you have an app, uh, let's say an iTunes account, and you have 5,000 songs on that, and your kids have 2,000 songs, you can access that. This actually sees the music on the computer. You can access it and stream the music from your computer right through your sound system. Better than that, you can actually grab music off of somebody's iPad or iPhone. So if a friend comes over to your house, you can almost do this without them knowing it, but you could almost grab the music that's on their phone in their pocket and literally start playing it. But it's, it's not unusual today for people to come over with a playlist. I've made a holiday playlist. I've made a, hey, here's the playlist for our Labor Day party. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to listen to when we sit down and eat th a Thanksgiving dinner. So if Jim's coming to my house and he's the guy with the playlist all the time, when he shows up with his iPad, all he does is he connects to my Wi-Fi, I see it here, it says Jim's iPad, I hit Bing and I'm listening to his music throughout the house. So you've got access to anything on a computer. This is a really cool one. We can stream in XM or Sirius, which is very popular because a lot of us have that in our cars now. And it was never that easy to get it into the house. You had to put an antenna up and run wires and it was sketchy at best. Today you can stream XM or Sirius in right on this. Okay. The thing that I like the most, and this has been the real surprise for me, there's a radio feature on here. Now, I wouldn't have thought that was as popular as it's turned out to be, because how many people have been listening to AM or FM lately? The response to that has been incredible. I'm getting calls back from customers that are saying, I'm listening to my high school football team on a Friday night. I mean, I, you know, I grew up in Michigan, and I'm tuning in to the local AM station and listening to the high school football team that I played for 20 years ago on my system. That's pretty cool. The uh, music director, the, the uh, conductor for the Reading Symphony Orchestra is from England. He was in my store. He was buying one of these systems. 
And he was looking at that, and he said, really, can you get any radio? I said, any radio station around the globe. So there's a search button that you hit, and we, call, we, we went to search BBC, and it brought up 30 BBC stations. And his eyes lit up, and he's looking at it, and he said, go to that one, boom, BBC number four. And it was bringing in the cricket match from his hometown. You know, this, this thing can connect us. So you'd be surprised how much you use it. Now, in this instance, we set up something here. We just call it local Reading radio stations. And I've got about 30 or 40 stations that broadcast from within a 100-mile radius. Uh, for the purposes of this, let's see, we had... This morning we were listening to uh, Car Talk when I set this up. But I'm going to select WHYY, which is a public station out of Philadelphia. Why is it always wet out there? There it is. Now, if you heard a great station in Seattle on your last vacation, you can tune it in. If there's a jazz station from Denver, Colorado, or anything else, you can tune it in and listen to it. That's simple. Okay. You can search by country. You can tune into you know Venezuela and listen to news. You can go anywhere you want with that. So literally, there's also a service on the right. If you have an artist in mind, like if you just type in Frank Sinatra, <clears throat> it'll just start playing Frank Sinatra music. So you literally can't access any music around the world. It's all there. Any questions about that? Yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah. This controller is actually, uh, a, this, I had to steal this out of our showroom this morning. This is designed for us to use in our store. <clears throat> this runs on iPads or, or iTunes, okay? But, <clears throat> excuse me, iPads or iPhones or any Android operating system. Basically, these devices we're showing you will work on anything except a Blackberry. That's really the better way to put it. Um, we don't have Wi-Fi in this building. So, and, and by the way, the, the stuff gets mated. So, for example, my phone, <clears throat> this Sonos control that's in my phone, this phone is matched to the setup in my house. Now, I can change it in a few minutes to make it match this one, but what I did is I stole these two out of the showroom this morning, so they were already matched to each other. So, yes, you can control it, but the initial setup is that you have to make this stuff. You have to set it up. You have to put in, for example, your XM account. You know, you're going to log in, set that up. If you have Pandora accounts, we've got to get in there with your passwords and log it in. We have to mate your devices to this. We can mate as many as you want. So <clears throat> if between you, your wife, and your kids, you've got seven phones and iPads, or even your laptop computer, for example, all of those devices can be programmed to control all of these things. It's not limited to just one. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah, this is um, this is just a tabletop radio version, which is very handy. But if you know, and again, we get into some house. You've already got a stereo system sitting there, and I hear this a lot. You know, we haven't we don't use that much anymore. The reason people don't use their stereos that much anymore is because there's nothing to listen to on them. No one's buying CDs anymore. No one's listening in typically to this. I got to be careful. I say this. There's a limited number of radio stations you can really pick up here. Clearly, there's three of them that you're going to get clearly. So it's a limiting factor. When you have the added source, so they, this company makes a little box this big that you can connect right to the existing stereo you have, and now all of these music sources are coming out of the stereo you already own. So again, we have to look at everybody's situation differently. You know, we get into homes where some people have equipment, they don't, they listen to certain things. We can make this stuff work in new and existing homes to, to you know, meet your needs. Uh, the last thing which I can't demonstrate really is everybody's familiar now with streaming movies and video content. Um, the world is changing very quickly here. I mean, it's changing by the day. In fact, it's, it's the Wild West with streaming. Uh, at, at this moment, I mean, if you think about the logic or the, the progression of this, we all started out with TV sets and we'd go home and we'd we tune in and watch whatever was on cable. Now there's six, seven, eight hundred cable channels. Uh, used to be that the networks produced all the hot TV shows and then there was odd stuff on the ESPN or the, or the History Channel or whatever. You know, today individual networks are programming uh, original shows. Now, 
bear in mind, there's only a handful of, of, of companies that actually broadcast through the air. The broadcast networks, there's only five of them. ABC, CBS, NBC, PBS, and Fox. They're the only ones that use the public airways. Everybody else only exists on cable. If you don't have cable, <clears throat> you can't get those other channels until now. So now with the internet and internet connected devices, televisions and whatnot. So the next step, by the way, on that progression that I was describing is everybody would go to Blockbuster on a Friday night. You remember standing in line with four movies in your hand and waiting to rent, and then being told you had a late fee when you got to the counter, <laughs> right? How pleasant was that? We were all waiting for the change for that thing. So the next progression is pay-per-view. Hey, I can watch that movie for four bucks, you know, by pushing a button. Eh, it's the same as I would have paid to rent it, and it just shows up on my bill. Now we have services that are being created specifically to stream movies, flat fee, like Netflix. You pay eight bucks a month from Netflix, and you have access to any video content that they have as much as you want to use for the month. Now, there's, well, this thing is in its infancy. It really is in its infancy. It's going to change the way we, we buy services completely. I mean, when this thing is done, I think you're going to see a total upheaval of cable systems, uh, networks. I, I, the whole landscape is going to look differently because you're going to be able to buy programming from who you want at the rate that you want over the Internet. And that's the game changer. The, the day will come when we're not locked into and beholden to a $100 a month cable bill for 600 channels when we watch three or four because that's really what we have right now um, so televisions are smart in fact samsung is out there calling theirs the smart tv it'll plug into the internet now what these things do is they are designed at this moment only to go to specific sites so that television is only going to go to netflix hulu blockbuster whatever there, you know it's, it's not something it's not a computer it can't you know you're not going to go to Google and search, do search terms on your TV. It has to go to specific sites. And you can stream in the services. All of these services are very different. I've heard people say, I don't get it. Yeah, there's, no, there's no good movies on Netflix. You're right. Okay. Every one of these services has to pay for that content. And every one of those services has picked a niche. Now, Netflix has picked a niche, which is not new movies. Because if you look, there's... There's really nothing, there's no new movies for the last four years because they don't really have the money to pay for that. So their thing was older TV shows. That's really what their niche was. Um, you're seeing today, I'm seeing uh, like the studios are lining up behind this. When you have Disney and Sony and these other guys starting to invest in these streaming services, over time you're going to have access to a lot of content and, and the world will change dramatically. But right now, it's, that's the common way to stream movies into your house on any TV you want and watch it for flat fee. It's dramatically changed uh, the way we do things. That doesn't necessarily tie into these things, but it's, it's actually probably the most commonly used feature uh, in a, quote, smart house. Now, the last thing that I will wrap up with, because we're getting late, all of these things that we have just shown you, all of them depend on a robust network in your home. Okay, the connection to the internet is extremely uh, critical here and is going to become even more so. So let me explain, right? The pipeline out there is good. Comcast cable, you know, there's a number of good services, but that, that pipeline to your house is really good and robust and has a lot of capacity. Okay, but as we like to say, the last hundred feet of the information superhighway is kind of a dirt road because where it's coming into your house is where the problem is. So when I get calls from people and they say, hey, I'm trying to watch this movie and the thing is just spinning, or every five minutes it's stopping and it's freezing, I go, what's wrong with my TV? There's nothing wrong with your TV, what's wrong is your internet connection. So when you think about from the street to your television device, or from your street to your music device, or from your street to the, to the security cameras, that signal is going through four or five interchanges. First, it's dealing with whatever kind of wiring you have in your house. And again, if you've got a 20, 30-year-old house, your wiring is old. It does not have the bandwidth or capacity for today's products and services. It just doesn't. Okay? Then you're plugging it into, there's a modem. Now, from that modem, and maybe you got it from the cable company, and you went with their router, their wireless router or whatever. Then maybe you had some extra devices, so you went to Staples, and you bought a $79 switch and all this stuff. By the time the signal's getting to your device, it works for, tro you know, for going through pages on the internet. That does not require a lot of data or bandwidth. 
movies and music and video and pictures and video like that requires unbelievable amounts of bandwidth. There was a time last year where they estimated that Netflix alone accounted for 40% of all the data being transmitted on the internet. Just one company. Because the bandwidth required to send a movie through the pipeline and get it in your house is dramatic. And we're not, we're not even broad, they're not even streaming high def movies yet. So the internet is, is, is the problem in your house. So I want you to consider this. Every, every uh, router that you've ever bought, if you bought a $79 router at Staples, there's probably been two or three firmware updates to that thing that you're not aware of that you should perform to get the thing up to date. But the standards changed. So what I'm saying is a $79 router is something that you typically should be replacing probably every year or two because the standards have gone up. We went from N to G. There are some wireless routers, Wi-Fi, um, that will have greater bandwidth capability but shorter range in your house. There are some that have greater range in your house but lesser bandwidth capability. So getting good advice from the ITN on, on what's happening in your home from the wire that runs through the house to the routers to the modems and the other devices you use before it gets to here to make this run properly that don't underestimate that that is a key part of this and that stuff has to be up to speed